Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Rume Paulson. It's Thursday, the 10th of October 2024, and today is World Mental Health Day. Now, this serves as a reminder that your mental well-being is important. It is paramount. You need to take care of yourself. And I hope that it helps us foster an environment where everyone feels safe to speak. I know that in Nigeria, most times, we never really delve into things that has to do with mental health, but it is time for us to start looking into that and I want you to know that if you're struggling with anything well look for a safe space it is important that you speak up do not be silent and everything is going to be okay so that is it for World Mental Health Day all right on today's breakfast you'll be looking at several hot topics one of which South Korean investors planning for Nigerian refineries we'll be discussing that much later in the show as well as betrayal by elected leaders aiding bandits won't be tolerated and that that is according to the NDF. We'll also be taking global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day to set the tone. In the business world, everyone is paid in two coins, cash and experience. Take the experience first. The cash will come later. And that is according to Harold S. Genin, the CEO of International Telephone and Telegraph Corporation. And he says this morning in the business world, everyone is paid in two coins, cash and experience. Take the experience first the cash will come later that goes without saying you know it is important that you follow your passion if you're passionate about something you would not be bothered about the cash most times i know that you know cash is what we use to pay our bills but the experience is something that you can never really put a price on it you can never really say um this is how much your experience is worth over time you tend to find out that your experience is worth even much more than the cash that you're asking for so you're being paid in two coins it's definitely cash and experience but how the importance that you put on the experience will determine how much the cash will come later on if you're just fixated on saying i want to make money now you're forgetting that you know there's a lot to learn when doing business you're learning every day because you're you know faced with certain situations and you find out how to navigate through so the experience is even more important than the cash the cash is good definitely don't get me wrong but understand that it takes a process it's a journey and the cash would definitely come if you are the best at what you do there is no way no one would not want you and pay for your services that is why you need to put value first if you put value first which is surmountable obviously to the experience that you've garnered over time then the cash would definitely come but if you're just saying i want you to pay me xyz amount right now people are going to wonder what's the value you're bringing what are you bringing to the table why should i pay you this money but if they know that you you are filled with so much that they need from you they definitely need you and the experience that you have to give them the cash would definitely start to flow in so do not be fixated about cash this morning i know it's business um thursday and most times we always want money 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 but everything is not about money sometimes you need to take what is required for you to learn from that experience, from that journey, from that business relationship, it's important that you put that first, even before the cash. And you'll be surprised when the cash starts flowing in and how much will flow in eventually. All right, let's move over to our top trending stories. This one says, federal government unveils CNG vehicle conversion initiative. The federal government has launched a new online platform to help Nigerians convert petrol power vehicles to compress natural gas CNG. Well, this initiative was announced by the National Orientation Agency, NOA, earlier this week. It is one of the efforts to promote cleaner energy across the country. Through the platform, vehicle owners can now choose flexible payment plans, allowing them to convert their cars and pay in affordable monthly installments. The NOA in a statement shared this. He emphasized that the process has been made easier and more accessible and more than ever. 
According to the agency, switching to CNG is now smoother with tailored payment options designed to make the conversion affordable for all. Well, in this time or in this era now where petrol is pegged at 998 naira, especially um, with the NNPC gas stations or fuel stations, um, I think now is the time for everyone to start looking for ways to convert. But, you know, even converting to CNG, is it really, really um, cheaper? I know that you can use less, you know, with your vehicles right now, but even the gas is not, it's not as as affordable as we make it to be. I think 12 kg should be something around 17 to 20,000 right now. However, I digress. Let's just look at it. I think it's great that, you know, the, the federal government, they're thinking of ways to help people. But I'm sure a lot of, a lot of Nigerians would say, you know, if you want to help us, help us by reducing the price of fuel. But if we're looking at having a cleaner um, Nigeria, obviously you, you, you see other countries, they're moving into, they're moving into, um, you know, a way where their buses, where they're not really having to do, dwell with so much emissions anymore. So if you're looking for cleaner energy, this is the way to go. And having to convert, um, you know, your vehicle into one is from petrol to CNG is a great idea. I think it might save you some money. I don't know how much. I don't know if it's a lot of money, but still it helps the environment. And if we're saying that we want to be big players when it comes to saving our planet this is you know one way to go what i really love about this is the affordable plans um we know how nigeria can be i don't know how affordable that plan would be and the payment you know the inst installment plan that they're trying to give people but at least there's a step in the right direction for people who feel that they cannot afford petrol because petrol is super expensive right now we'll be talking about that much later but if petrol is really expensive for you, I think this is an option that you should definitely um, explore. You should look into it and say, how can I convert? And, you know, what payment plan can I work on? What options do I have? And that might just even work better for you because you might be saving some money as well as also helping the planet. So kudos to the federal government for this initiative that's been rolled out. But we want more. We definitely want more things to do. Um, I, I mean, petrol is expensive. So if we want, if you really want to help us, for people who have to use um, petrol as an alternative source of power, because this is definitely for vehicles, but for my generator, I need to power my business. Um, you know, I need to get an alternative source of power to make sure that my business is running smoothly. How does that work as well? So this kind of like cater to just a select few people who have, you know, who have vehicles and that's what they want to use it for. But petrol is not only for vehicles. Petrol is for so many other things. And I think they need to start looking into that, how they can help everybody, not just some people. And regardless, how many downfalls really would say, downfall drivers would say, you know what, I want to change my downfall from, petrol, from a petrol vehicle to CNG. So transportation will still be expensive regardless. So if we're looking at ways to help people, um, we need to look for something that is more holistic, that would work for all Nigerians, because still, things are going to be expensive, especially with the price of petrol right now. So great initiative, but we want you to look at it in-depthly and look for ways um, that would cater to all Nigerians and not just a select few. All right, another top trending story says, Senate asks federal government to declare state of emergency on girl child protection. The Senate has asked the federal government to declare a state of emergency on the protection and welfare of the girl child to address the educational health and safety needs of girls across the country. The Senate has called on the state governments to adopt and enforce the Child Rights Act and the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act with a focus on eliminating harmful traditional practices such as female genital mutilation. These recommendations came after a motion by Senator Ireti Kigigbe, who highlighted the challenges faced by Nigerian girls and the urgent need for federal intervention to safeguard their future. Senator Ereti raised concerns over the continued prevalence of child marriage in Nigeria, especially in the northern regions, citing the 2018 Nigeria Demographic and Health Survey, NDHS, which reports that over 44% of girls are married before the age of 18, with states like Zamfara, Bauchi, and Sokoto showing particularly high rates. 
Several senators expressed strong support for the motion, which comes just ahead of the International Day of the Girl Child, celebrated annually on October 11, which is tomorrow. As a woman, as a lady, I think this is something that everyone needs to, you know, be supportive of, regardless of your gender, whether you're male or female, because there's so many things that happen. There are violence against girls. Um, there's the, you know, genital mutilation. There is obviously child marriage. There's so many things. And these are kids who are supposed to be in school. You know, they should have the access to quality education. They should have access to good health care. Being a woman is not as easy, and I'm not saying that being a man is easy either. Um, being a human being is not very, is not as easy, but we can make it easier for each other. And for the girls, it's important that we save our girls. I mean, these are our future mothers. These are the people who are going to tend to our nation. So, I mean, this is such a great cause and i feel everybody needs to be a part of it and kudos to senator Ereti, you know for bringing this up at the um at the senate because it cannot even it's not even something that we can make light of it's not something that we cannot talk about if we're saying that we want to be a progressive nation we need to look at our kids and giving our kids the quality lifestyle that they need then that's what would say yes in the future nigeria is safe in their hands and for these women or for these future women um they're girls right now but they're going to be mothers someday they're going to be people who are going to even be in the senate as well they're going to be in the elm of affairs for nigeria and if we're not going to stop the genital mutilation right now then their lives are at risk their lives are definitely at risk because there are so many people who die from that there's so many people who just do not do not make it back after having you know their genitals being mutilated and i think it's even a barbaric thing in most countries nobody does that anymore and of course nigeria is one of those countries that we've decided not to do that i hope um but yes aside that talking about education there's so much that women have that they can bring to the table and if you're not going to give them that choice in the first place, then what are we talking about? It starts from females. Instead of putting them into child marriages, like we've seen over 44% in the northern Nigeria of girls are being forced into child marriage even before they are 18, before they can vote, before they can even make certain choices for themselves, before they know anything, they're already pushed into child marriages which is quite sad and unfortunate because so many of them have bright futures. There are so many things that they want to do. Some of, them, some of them probably want to be pilots, doctors, accountants, lawyers, content creators, tech, tech sisters. There are so many things that they can do, but then they're pushed into marriages. They're pushed into the way of having to give birth and you know, just now become a mom that they are not even ready for. Meanwhile, we can give them a platform. We can give them something to start with quality education. So I think it's important that everyone is supportive of this. And I know we'll be talking about this much more um, tomorrow, which is the International Day of the Girl Child. But I hope that in Nigeria, we're looking for ways to make girl child, um, you know, this cause something that is paramount to everyone, something that is crucial and that we need to start looking at as soon. As, in fact, right now, not even as soon as possible. All right, our final top trending story says reverse pump price immediately, NLC tells the federal government. The leadership of the Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, strongly criticized the federal government on Wednesday over the recent hike in the price of premium motor spirit petrol. The NLC called for an immediate reversal of the fuel price increase, questioning why a private company is determining the prices. NLC President Joe Ajaro expressed frustration at the government's repeated monthly price hikes despite the fact that the minimum wage is still not being implemented. He stated, we are disappointed by this latest rise in petrol prices. It seems this government is only focused on increasing fuel prices without considering the ability of Nigerians to cope or offering any meaningful relief. Hmm. Ajaro also criticized the role of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited NMPCL in setting prices, describing it as a monopolistic practice and urged the government to develop a comprehensive economic plan rather than relying on inconsistent short-term policies. 
He warned that the latest price hike would worsen poverty, reduce production capacity, and lead to further job losses with widespread negative consequences and i think that is definitely true with the price right now i think in lagos it's 998 naira per liter at the nnpcl and of course in other states it's definitely over a thousand naira even in lagos most people well other fuel stations would definitely be selling more than a thousand naira right now because the nnpc um, nnpc fuel stations are selling for 90, 998 naira now in recent times, it just seems like every other week we're seeing a price hike. I mean, uh, this year we were still buying for let's say about 590 something or 560 something. And how do we go to almost a hundred percent increase in just a few months? And I, I know that as of when they were still even as of when it was still 596 naira, um, yeah, 567 naira or something like that. That was when we were still talking about the minimum wage, and the NLC agreed at that point to the 70,000 naira minimum wage because you know there was an agreement that uh, you know um, the fuel price would not be hiked anymore. So we've seen a price increase about three, four times right now. Things are going to be so expensive. Inflation is going to be at a whole time high. Prices of goods and services are going to go up astronomically. How are people supposed to survive in this time? And like the leader of the NLC said, you know, we're not even seeing any relief. We're not saying, um, you're not thinking for the people that how can they cope if we do this? If we increase the price, how are people going to fare? Because as of today, coming to work, I saw queues at the gas station. A lot of people obviously are panic buying. They just want to get there and get the fuel because there's that whole thing. The moment the price is increased, there might be shortage of, you know, this product. And of course, that's going to have, that's going to, you know, trickle down to even the buses. People who have to go to work now may be stuck. There's just a whole lot that happens. And I think that the government definitely needs a comprehensive plan. What are your plans for Nigerians? Because it just seems like people are being pushed against the wall. Their backs are up against the wall. There is nothing you can do. And at some point, they're going to look back at you and, and say, no, we cannot afford to do this anymore. How are things going to be better for Nigerians? That's what we expect from our leaders. We expect people who have plans, who are proactive, who are sane, who are even empathetic towards the people and saying, you know what, I don't think this is the right policy we should put or we should implement at this time. But no, not in Nigeria. We're seeing, oh, you know what, the policies are going to work. Just tighten up your belts. Things will get better in the future. But how about right now? How about now? Things will get better in the future. That's only if I live to the future. That's only if I'm okay to the future. And we're talking about World Mental Health Day. I, I, I can only imagine what the mental health of Nigerians are, how people are faring mentally. Because minimum wage is not being increased. What can 70,000 Naira really buy for you right now? A bag of rice is over 100,000 Naira. Beans, grains, so many things. So how am I supposed to fare? How am I supposed to cope? We're talking transportation. How do I go to work and come back? How do I pay my house rent? How do I pay my children's school fees? How do I even save in this economy? And everything boils down to one product, PMS, fuel, premium motor spirits that everybody needs. How can my business thrive? How am I supposed to make money for myself? It is ridiculous that we are at this point, but I think the government needs to find our way back. What trajectory are we on? Where are we going to? How are things going to get better? Give us a plan. You cannot tell me to just tighten up my belt and follow you when I don't even know where you're taking me to because if we're looking at the trajectory of things, if we're looking at where we are right now, we're in a crisis and nobody is talking about it. I know that they know, but I hope that they're doing something. They say they're doing something, but I don't know how that reflects or the impact of that right now. You're telling me I should wait and these policies will start to yield fruits in the next, I don't even know if it's a couple of months or a couple of years. But as of right now, my mental health is even crazy because I don't know how I'm supposed to fend for myself and my family. 
I think honestly, the federal government, they need to do more. And with the NLC asking that the price should be reversed, I don't know if that's going to happen because we've seen that happen so many times where CSOs, the NLC, even Sarah, for instance, would tell you, I'm going to sue you. But the federal government, uh, you know, they never relent when it comes to increasing prices or when it comes to their own policies. But I think the key word here is be an empathetical leader because we need you to put policies that work for us not policies that are putting us in anguish and pain, not policies that are making us feel like, you know, the world is crashing down because we cannot afford the basic necessities of life. If we had so many things and we had the minimum wage, you know, at 70,000 naira, it would still work because I know that definitely, you know, I can go to the hospital and I'll be treated for free or almost free. I know that, you know, you, there are schools that I can take my kids to and then they will be able to get quality education without me paying so much or without me breaking the bank. I know that there are transports, you know, road transport networks that I can go on with as little, you know, little fund and I can commute to work and back. I know that there are systems in place for me that, would, that I would say, you know what, even this money that I'm earning is still okay. But things are deteriorating in Nigeria. Systems are not working. Money isn't coming in. There's just a lot. And I think the federal government needs to go back to the drawing board and say, how can we be better for Nigerians? Honestly, that is my own thoughts. That's my own opinion. Um, they need to definitely do that. They need to do that because right now, things are ridiculous. Prices are expensive. It's crazy. It's, it's, just, it's just something else. But I think I'm going to stop here right now before I keep going on and on. All right. That's it for our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break. We'll look at the weather. When we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.